Over the past month or two, I've been putting together a number of small um, boards, primarily with surface mount components. I've gone down this route, um, uh, I guess for simplicity, um, I guess size of the kind of the overall parts and packages and price. I think through hole components um, certainly seem like they're, they're easier to kind of fit and put together, but I think if you can get a right technique for surface mount, it is, it's definitely the, the better approach. And it also makes it feasible to then roll out this design for surface mount kind of production line work if it ever reached that kind of stage. Um, in the past, I've, uh, I've manually soldered parts onto the board. So for example, uh, this little kind of surface mount capacitor here, I'd place it onto the board and solder it in place manually. Uh, but I found another technique at the moment which works really well. So I'm just going to quickly run through this first method and point out uh, how I do it and some of the problems encountered with it. So I've got this capacitor here. This is an 0805 size. Um, I think it's kind of middle of the range for surface mount components. You can get smaller, um, but I think they become a bit too fiddly for working with by hand. Uh, although I'm sure if you've got the skills, then it's definitely viable. And then there's a larger size, which to me just seem a little bit um, extreme. Um, but I'm going to solder this onto this pad over here. Just using kind of the, this method I used to use originally. Um, and it's a perfectly viable method um, for low volume stuff, it's fine. Um, and so it involves using a um, regular soldering iron tip. The, you need to, if you try and heat up one of these sides, the solder action will suck. And um, there'll be a suction action where it'll all kind of ball up. So I'll point that out now. So this capacitor is resting in the correct place. But as soon as you try and heat it up, like so, it kind of doesn't play right. See, the pastors off at the wrong angle. And so it kind of sticks to the soldering iron. It won't kind of stay on the board. So I get rid of that one. And that, basically that means you can't use, uh, uh, you don't have a hand left for solder. And so what I do, grab another part. I will load up the soldering iron with a little bit of solder on the end. And then place the component onto the right pad. And then usually using uh, something pointy, in this case a knife, I will hold it in place while dabbing one side. And that is enough to take it down. You can then quickly use the solder on the other side. And that gives you a fairly good join. Um, it doesn't look particularly great because the first side of this you're doing it, um, you're not applying the solder properly and so it balls up and looks a little bit ugly. But this method does work and it, it, it is fine. If you've just got a soldering iron uh, to get access to, that uh, it works well. I've done lots of boards that way. Um, putting a chip down in the middle is is fairly simple as well. It's actually uh, more uh, easier to do than this. So you place the uh, chip down, hold it down in one angle, with pla uh, one side with something pointy. Again, with a loaded soldering iron, just kind of tack one pin one side, another pin the other side, and then you can then go through with the, the solder and the iron and solder each of the pins uh, quite happily and that works really well. And that, that, that's perfectly fine for doing up one of these. Um, the, I'm gonna run through the other method I've kind of, uh, I'm working with now. The, the setup is a little bit bigger, but it's definitely worth it. So this method requires a slightly different tool set. You need um, some solder paste. Uh, this is fairly cheap to obtain. Um, it's just, uh, solder in paste form and uh, you can pick that stuff up on ebay and other places it uh, can go bad um, if it's not kept in the right conditions so if you so if you are using some paste and it's just kind of too dry or just not sticking right there's a good chance it's gone off and um, 
but it, if, when you get it right, it, it's lovely stuff to work with. I keep this in the, the fridge just to try and hopefully kind of extend its lifespan. The other thing you need is a uh, hot air rework station gun. I picked this one up really cheaply in China, like 15 quid, but I think you can pick them up in the UK um, or anywhere else for, for not much more than that. And it's, um, for this kind of work, it's really, really invaluable. It's necessary for this method. And so this is the circuit board for the uh, serial to ethernet adapter I've been working on. This is um, in version two. And so what we need to do is to apply paste to each of the pads. And the method I'm going to, I use for that at the moment is uh, a knife. I'm dipping it into the paste and going around very carefully, kind of dabbing. It's time consuming process um, and it's not great, but it does work. The, I have ordered some solder paste in a syringe, but I'm not sure how feasible that's going to be to use because you're kind of trying to apply it and squeeze it out at the same time. Um, the ideal method is a solder paste applicator tool, which is an air powered tool, which um, like a foot switch or a trigger switch, it dispenses just the right amount, but they are a couple hundred quid and definitely outside my price range. So I'm sticking with this method for now. The, the other thing I've started doing recently uh, to really speed up things, it sounds a bit stupid, but it's, it's almost something you can almost certainly do to design and that's to reduce the part count. The, the number of parts on this board has reduced significantly. So I've reduced the number of um, kind of, I guess, kind of filter caps or just bypass caps on there. Um, just really down to the bare minimum. The original board I was connecting um, this is on the, the AT Mega device, uh, the analog ground pin via a capacitor to ground. And I just realized I don't need to do that. Um, there are other bits like that where you can just really kind of cut back and just do the absolute bare minimum. So this board here has got very few parts. Um, there's a couple of capacitors for the crystal uh, on here. Okay, bypass caps, the resistor for the reset switch. And the odd other bits, the Again, this could be simplified by using a uh, resonator, uh, which has the capacitors built in. Um, but for, for price and accuracy, I'm going for a dedicated crystal here. So I'm just going to apply the solder paste to the pads now. So I've finished applying the paste to this board here. I've tried to keep the, the dabs on the individual small pads here as neat as possible, although it's a bit of a mess. Along here, I've put a single kind of, um, tries to a single long line over the pads, but um, time will tell how accurate that's going to be. Uh, the, when you heat this up, you get um, the surface tension effect. The solder only wants to bond to the, the exposed pads and the parts, so these parts will self-align. Um, with these pads here, the, the solder will be drawn to the actual pads, the, the legs of the, the IC. So it doesn't matter too much. Um, I've found it's, I've had about a 50% success rate with these coming out perfect versus some coming out with bridges. And that's where I've just judged the amount of solder not quite right. And so there's a little bit too much solder in there and it's going to bridge a little bit. But it's, it's very easy to fix. So it's just a case of uh, placing all the components now, then it can be heated up. So smaller s and components usually come on strips like this. Uh, it's designed for this, uh, it's designed so this can be fed into a pick and place machine. Uh, but it's also a pretty convenient way of storing parts. Um, so I usually um, kind of pull out, store these in a ring binder, uh, various different types. And so for now, this is a, a 0.1 microfarad capacitors in here. And I believe the design has uh, two capacitors located in the upper right hand corner. So I just kind of take two out of the strip, put them on the bed there, and then using tweezers, very carefully pick and align. And so my hand is kind of typically in this position, so I'll rotate the board uh, so it lines up. And then you could line it up over the top and release. Ideally it will drop down and kind of push it into place a little bit more. 
And because uh, in this design here, for example, I now have to then rotate this board again. So the next one here is in at a different angle. And so I'm, I'm focusing now on designs of having all the components with the same orientation, just to aid in this placement process. So that I don't need to keep rotating the board and just be left in the one position and everything placed accordingly. In addition to the small parts, there's also the larger bits. So the crystal and the AT Mega and the switch over here. And at the moment I'm storing these in, um, it's kind of packaged in little anti-static bags and just with a, a label on the top. I uh, found this to be a pretty good method of storing parts like this. So I can kind of transfer them into a single kind of unified packaging. So in this case, it's just uh, when it comes to populating one of these boards, let's grab the individual parts you need. The 80 megas here, they tend to get supplied in a couple of different formats. Sometimes they'll come loose, sometimes I, I've had these individually wrapped. Um, but the, the legs do occasionally get a little bit bent out of shape, so it's worthwhile double checking that first. Uh, so placing these parts is very similar to everything else. Try and align and then drop in place. The bigger parts don't really self-align because uh, the heating isn't uniform enough for that to occur so you need to be a little bit more careful about alignment of these parts. And obviously parts which require orientation <laughs> you should be double checked so the dots and the dots there. The placing of this part I found quite funny to begin with when I first did this because you can't really see the pads on here it's, it's almost just you, you drop it in and hope for the best and then this needs to be nudged ever so slightly just to make sure everything's lined up as well as it can be all right so that is that's all the parts placed it's going to prep now for heating it up so I place the board onto a bit of wood for just heat protection and then using the gun um, I've put this on a very uh, low speed um, on the unit I've got which has got a 1 to 8 control I put it on around about 3 and that's at 320 degrees and this is so the, the low speed is so the airflow doesn't blow any components out of the way I'm just relying on the pace to hold everything in and so it's just a case of um, going around and heating everything in general so this, this process here, I'm just going around heating all the bits and pieces and in, in a relatively short period of time parts will start to um, solder so the solder will reach the required temperature and go. Usually the larger IC goes first, um, I think that's just because it's absorbing a lot of heat. So this stage the board is obviously very hot um, so don't go and pick it up which is a case of um, then inspecting the board to see if there are any problems. A little magnifier like this is invaluable for checking over boards it really does give you the the magnification you kind of uh, need to really see what's going on. Um, luckily this time around despite a particularly messy application it's all um, worked quite nicely. Um, the yeah, it's probably not going to be good enough to see but the, the chip's gone in really nicely um, on some of these pads here I put down a little bit too much paste the 
the, these small components, they, they kind of get pulled down to the, the board itself. So you don't really have to worry about uh, shorts underneath the parts. Um, uh, the NEX's solder here is just got a little pushed out to the side in little balls. Um, because this, there's no copper on the board for this to stick to, it um, usually just kind of brushes away or kind of knock out of uh, place. The, a lot of people will put down uh, flux, so using a kind of a flux pen, that kind of thing. I've, I've never found the need, to be honest. Um, it's supposed to be the, uh, kind of the, the wonder, um, applicator wonder thing to make this process so much better, but this process is really seamless at the moment. Um, I don't see how it could be much better, but that's not to say it doesn't help things. The, the only real improvements to a process like this is just the time consuming nature of placing the, flat, uh, the solder paste down. And that can really just be improved by reducing the number of parts on the board. As if I was doing more of these, or if I wanted the extra setup, then um, a solder mask, which is just a big uh, piece of metal with holes where all the paste should go. And you place the, or the solder mask over, or the, the, the uh, stencil over, and you kind of use a squeegee and push the solder through the holes, and it gives you the perfect amount of application. Um, it's fantastic if you're doing loads of boards or big sheets, you've got a setup for it. Um, for something like this, it's just stupid kind of setting up all of that just for one, for the odd part. Um, if I was doing more of them, or if I could panelize them perhaps, but at the moment that's just not. It's a waste of time, I think, doing something like that. Th this process works well enough for that not to be an issue. The other side of things, this is um, handling um, through-hole parts. This particular board, um, which has a lot of connectors in, uh, this is for the Ethernet module, and uh, so this sits over the top of the Ethernet module, so that's taken care of. Uh, this is the, the main kind of um, uh, programming header. This is a one-time only process. I started off when I'm doing these boards of soldering these headers in place, um, but I'm kind of, it's not much point, it's only done once, so I've pushed, um, so I've put the, this equivalent header is now pushed into the programming cable, and that's so all I do is just push the terminals into here, hold it in tight and program it, it takes 30 seconds, it's done, and I never need that to port again. Um, so this is the only one I ever really populate nowadays, because uh, that's the one used for day-to-day -day programming, debugging, and testing of these. So there you have it. That's my current uh, kind of procedure process for soldering these boards. It's simple. It takes a, a couple, about two or three minutes to apply the solder paste, um, and then a minute or two more to apply the components, and about 30 seconds to a minute to heat it. So I think I timed one of these boards or to any one of these boards at uh, around about it's somewhere between four and six minutes. Um, for these small numbers at this stage, it is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, the, the best thing I've come to realize is just reduce the component count. Uh, this board here, which I've made up recently, uh, it's got you know, kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts on it, or nine parts. Um, the next re revision of that that's gone off reduces the part count, I think, down to three or four components, and it's just going to make the process a whole lot easier.